<sighs> it's comfortable out here. I like it. Have you ever noticed that if there's an easy way to do it, men will invent a hard way to do it? I mean, it's kind of like once we have the whole thing of salvation down, then we have to go out of our way to come up with everything else we need to do, like sanctification and purification and, you know, do this and do that, or else you're not one of the true Christians, you're just a Christian, or you're carnal Christian, not spiritual Christian. Man, I thought Jesus made it easy when he said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <laughs> it seems like no matter how simple God makes it, we have a way of kind of complicating things. It's almost as though we want to fix people, you know, and make them into our own image rather than let them be in the image of God and to rejoice in their salvation. I mean, do you do that? Do you find that you want to make people just like you or find people that share exactly the same way you do? Hmm. Interesting. Because there are certain things that it's true, you know, we're saved by grace and Jesus paid the price for our salvation and that, you know, if you live after the flesh, you're going to die with the flesh. If you live after the spirit, you're going to live with the spirit, you know, of God and you'll live forever. But sometimes I think people get like way overborn and trying to make things so hard that even they can't get into heaven or they can't keep people out of hell either one. Seems like sometimes people are out there making it so complicated that nobody's quite sure what they believe. I know I kind of look at people and scratch my head and think, you know, do you really want to go there? Do you really want to be that complicated about what Jesus has done for us? He loves you. I mean, the best way that I know how to keep things simple is to look at a child, you know, and explain it to a kid and kid says, okay, it goes off and plays and has fun and rejoices in what you told it, him or her, <laughs> it. <laughs> but you tell an adult and they go, but what about, and how about this, and what about this, and, you know, maybe we should do this, and maybe we should do that, and they kind of get into this whole big, kind of long, worked out, detailed plan of their plan for you. I kind of like this. You know, if Jesus said that, you know, I have come to reveal the Father and I've come to give you a relationship with the Father and I want you to know the Father and I want you to talk to the Father and I want you to know Him in a personal, intimate way, just as real as you see me and just as real as I am, just as much as you touch me, I want you to touch the Father and to know Him in a loving and intimate way as as I love you and I have loved you and I've washed your feet and that behold I, I, I'll, I'll even stand outside your door and knock you know and, and if you hear my voice I'll open the door you know or if you open the door I'll come in and bring my father and my Holy Spirit and we'll sit down and you know, we'll, we'll fellowship with you and we'll, we'll communicate and we'll talk to you and we'll, we'll be with you in life and we'll bring you into eternity you know kind of sounds simple to me but it gets a little complicated when people try to explain it to me. You know, they they say, well, you got to read the word, you know, seven days a week, every minute of the day, quote it, know it, use these numbers that have been added to it, use these chapters that have been added to it, you know, kind of get all wrapped up in it, you know, and memorize it. And I think, okay. <laughs> so now I can quote it and memorized it and tell people it and become a scribe. But when I'm talking to normal people, they don't listen so good, you know? So I usually ask people that have memorized it, well, what's that mean? And they go, and they'll quote some other part. And I'll say, well, what's that mean? And they'll quote some other part. And then I'll ask them, well, what's that mean? They quote some other part. And then I think, is that a magpie? I mean, do they know what it means? 
Do you know what it means? I mean, it seems to me that Jesus was just talking, you know, and that sometimes we make it more complicated than it need be. And sometimes, maybe, we need to learn and let children lead us. You know, just God said it, okay, and you just go with it, you know. I don't know. Sounds simple to me. So when Jesus says God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, seems like God loved the world. But then someone comes along and says, but, but he hates sinners, or he hates this, or he hates that. Or, and then they tell you all this trip about how this person, you know, can't be saved, or that person isn't saved, and that these have to show some kind of fruit in their life before they are saved, or they have to do some, you know, gyrations, and they have to stand on their head, and they have to, you know, repeat after them in some unknown language, and they have to roll around on the floor, and they have to, have to, have to. I thought if you had Jesus, you had it all. Yeah, maybe I got this salvation thing complicated, you know, or too simple. Maybe it's not about just knowing Jesus and talking to him and letting him lead me and letting the Father tell me what it is that's wrong with me and changes me. And I give him the freedom to work in my life and touch people's lives in a personal, intimate way. I share with them the everyday things that you can look around and see and see God's hand working and know that God has a plan and a purpose and that sometimes it's as easy as, as just saying hi to someone or being nice. And sometimes it's as complicated as maybe giving them a dollar, you know, for a meal or, you know, helping them out somewhere along the way. I don't know. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I got it right. Maybe it really is about the grace of God and God chooses to save and then works it out in us and then works through us as he chooses to for his purpose. Because I know when it comes to man's purpose, I see people dressed up in funny clothes and doing funny things and acting funny ways. And I'm glad they're happy and they look holy, you know, but uh, I don't know, you know. Somehow, I just don't see myself all dressed up in fancy robes and looking spiffy and shiny in the latest, greatest righteousness that man can come up with. Sometimes I think it's just about, you know, sitting down and having a conversation with God. Maybe that's too simple for you. Maybe it is all about religion, and getting out there and being religious. Or maybe it's just simply being real. That if you like that kind of stuff, you enjoy it. If you have a relationship, you enjoy it. If you talk to God and he talks to you, enjoy it. If he doesn't, eh, you might want to work on that. In God calling, life is not easy. My children, man has made of it not what my father meant it to be. Ways that were meant to be straight paths have been made by man into ways devious and evil, filled with obstacles and stones of difficulty. You know, I kind of agree with that. Seems like what God made simple, people make hard. What Jesus made available to us, seems like always someone's trying to rearrange it and change it, make it into something that maybe it wasn't meant to be. Maybe this will work for you. When you have a doubt and you're building up a sweat, you know, and you're kind of feeling guilty or feeling bad or feeling kind of worked up about something, and no matter what you do, you just can't seem to get rid of it, maybe ask God what he wants to do with it. I know for me, Hey, there are things I can't conquer in my life, you know? Much as people tell me, oh, you know, you just got to name it and claim it. Oh, you just got to pray more. Oh, you just got to fast. Oh, you just got to do this. Oh, you just got to do that. Oh, you got to memorize this. Oh, you got to memorize that. Oh, you got to roll over it. Oh, you got to roll over it. None of it ever worked. But you know, the more that I just kind of left it in God's hands and said, you know, God, I can't do it. 
<laughs> I really can't do it, man. The weird thing is, God did it. <laughs> huh. Do you hear that? God did it. Isn't that amazing? Pretty amazing to me. Remember, I can't do something. God does it. Now, I just ask God to do it, and I kind of kick back and watch the results. Like I said, seems pretty easy to me. Maybe, maybe we're the ones that make it complicated. Maybe we don't have to.